All right, now this idea here helps us to geometrically understand what's going on and what's all the arithmetic that's happening. And I sort of teased that at the end of last lesson, okay? So what I want you to do um, underneath this set of axes is um, draw a new, write a new subheading for me, which is vector operations. Okay, so let's do the ones that you already know. And then um, I'll show you how um, the insights that we can gain from this are really, really powerful and useful. Okay. All right. So firstly, addition. Addition. So draw for me any pair of random vectors. If you like, you can draw your vectors looking a lot like mine. So I've got a vector going off in some direction like that. This um, arrow over the top of something is the thing that indicates to you it's a vector. I'm going to call this vector P. And uh, let's draw another vector along with it. So something maybe like this. Q. Okay. So each of these vectors has a magnitude, has a direction. What happens if I add these two things together? Well, the vector P plus Q, we saw this before, right? This is the last thing. This is what we finished with last, last week is basically the effect of doing one vector after the other, right? It's sort of like stringing them together in a series, okay? So for example, one way we could get P plus Q is to do P first, so it's gonna look like that, and then do Q after that, so it would look something like this. Okay, so the new vector P plus Q is a new vector that achieves the translation of both of these vectors combined, right? So now, this vector here, that is P plus Q, okay? So P plus Q achieves P and Q in sequence, okay? Now, just like addition of our regular numbers, addition of vectors is commutative. Do you remember we mentioned this before? So maybe I don't want to do P first, maybe I want to do Q first. It's going to look like this. I'm going to go do that downward to the right, translation, and then afterwards I do this one, bring me up here, and you can see of course the net effect is the same, and that's because you can add vectors in any order you like, you still get the same sum. So far so good, okay? So that's how rectangular form is what we use to crunch the numbers on this and show that it was the case. Okay. Um, subtraction, how do we do subtraction? How would you think of subtraction? Okay, so usually when we think about like say, oh, five take away three, we're so good at doing subtraction of real numbers that we just say, oh, the difference between them, and we just give the answer, okay? But in terms of vectors, the direction is a little more malleable and flexible, so it's gonna be more helpful to think of it as the addition of a negative vector, okay? So if I use the same P and the same Q, right, and I wanted to have, say, P take away Q, Okay, how am I going to do this? Right here, unlike in addition, the order matters. Okay, so I'm going to do P first. For reasons that will become clear, I'm going to write it, draw it all the way over there. Okay. Now, what would negative Q, because that's really what I'm adding, what would negative Q look like? How would you describe it? Yeah, her. Would it be um, the P plus Q with the arrow going the other way? Okay, you're talking about this one here? As in Q with the arrow going the other way. Okay, let's find out. So I've done this guy, right? I've done the first part of this. Now I'm going to add on to, I'm going to string onto it negative Q. Now here's what Q looks like, right? Now negative Q has the same magnitude, just like say 2 and negative 2 have the same magnitude, but they're facing in opposite directions, okay? Another way of saying it is it's been rotated 180 degrees or pi radians. Okay, so I want you to think about this and draw the same one, I'll do it dotted, the same vector, same length, but facing the opposite direction, like that. Okay? Now this, this guy here, this is negative Q. Okay? So I've done this vector, it's actually looking a little bit longer, it's getting progressively shorter as I keep going. Okay? There's the original vector P, and now I'm going to add on to it this guy. There's negative Q. So where in this diagram is P minus Q? It's what, yeah, it's what joins these two together. It's like this. It's that guy there, right? P take away Q. 
Right. Now, one of the nice things about this is that it looks a bit like everything's kind of adrift. I don't have any um, any coordinate axes or anything like that to ground what's going on here. But you can connect these two ideas, and it's very important that you connect them this way. The p plus q and p minus q are kind of like these sides on a triangle that are related. Okay. Here's how I'm going to help you understand it. If I were to say combine all of these into a single diagram, hmm. combine these into a single diagram, what would it look like? Okay. So um, off on the side here, if you want to put this, we're going to do multiplication in a second, but before we do that, let's finish this off. What would it look like if I put these original vectors, if I place them at the origin? Okay. So if I put P and Q starting at the same spot, so is Q different? Now have a look, we've already established what P plus Q looks like, and we've established what P minus Q looks like. What are they in relation to this? Well, let me just add a few more lines onto this just to complete the picture, okay? Remember, a vector is direction and magnitude, but just as we demonstrated over here, you can move it any way you like. It can start and finish wherever you like. It'll still go the same direction, still go the same distance, okay? So I'm just gonna put in an extra couple of copies of P and Q on this diagram. Hopefully this rings some bells from last week. I'm going to add in another copy of Q over here. Like that's still Q, same direction, same magnitude. And then I'm going to put another copy of P. Okay. Can you see P plus Q and P minus Q in this diagram yet? Can you see them? Let me put them in for you. Here's P plus Q. Do you see it? It's running across there. It's one of the diagonals, right? Where's P minus Q? Where is it? It's the other diagonal, isn't it? It's that one. Please note the direction really matters. Look at where I put the arrow uh, head on this interval. It's over here going off to the left, okay? Because you can see, it's like, yeah, look, it's doing this and then heading up there. Look, if I track back in reverse, right? That's like negative Q. Do you see that? Q's supposed to go down to the right. That's what it's supposed to do. But negative Q means uh, go the other way, and that's what sends you up and to the left. Okay? So P plus Q, P minus Q, they are the opposite diagonals of a parallelogram. Okay?